Hey guys, so I'm working on this new uh, AMK with Sophia, and the gist is that she's in our bedroom and she's pretending it's the winter time. Yeah, so my idea is I like that she's coming around the corner and I want her to crawl into this little igloo thing. So, pretty nifty, but I need to solve a problem. My problem is, I want Sophia to be able to have some interactive shadows in this space to kind of help marry her in. So let's figure out how to make some interactive shadows from our keyed footage. Now, one of the things that I was really proud about for this video is that I found a 3D model of the same uh, drawer set that we have in our bedroom, which is great. So at this point right here, everything is now CG except for Sophia. So the drawers are CG and it's kind of our bridge back into the real world that she's coming from over here. But everything now is CG except for her. The only problem is she's a piece of footage rotoed and cut out and put in here, but she's not casting any real shadows into this scene and that's a problem for me. So. One of the ways I went about trying to solve it at first was like this. I went into Element and I created a new group where I was using a, a texture that was not visible to camera. And that texture was placed on this little stand-in. So just a couple of blobs like that. And uh, I'll leave it turned on for now. If I enable that, so what I was doing for this is I had a little null controlling this blob and I was kind of keyframing it along with Sophia to add what looked like a cast shadow from her. But as soon as I played it back, you could always tell that this kind of wasn't bouncing the same way that she was or didn't have a lot of definition. And I could go in and try to add more blobs and more pieces to try to get her correctly doing, you know, casting a shadow but it wasn't really working out well. So where do we go from here? Let's disable this group for now. It won't cast a shadow anymore. My first instinct was remembering that Element 3D allows you to use custom texture maps. So I thought, great, I'll go to a custom texture map. I'll sample the Sophia Rotode layer. So jumping into Element, I know that this group 2 is free right now. So one of my thoughts was I'll create a little stand-in plane like this. And if I create a null for this and enable it, I should now have little plane in my 3D space and you see that it's casting a shadow right here. It's kind of, it's a little bit obscure right now because uh, a little bit bizarre looking but this plane is casting a shadow so I thought great I'll jump into element and I'll texture that with this custom layer. So I'll stretch this out to more of an HD size and on its texture map, I will set its diffuse to Sophia, and then scroll down on the texture and say uh, the alpha threshold, I'll turn that up. Now as I do that, it's using the alpha threshold of that texture map to punch her out. So I thought, that's perfect, that's just what I need. I'll say okay. But when it comes back in here, it still casts the shadow for the whole plane. So I thought, okay, maybe maybe something's wrong with that texture. I'll try having it, you know, cast shadows. I'll make sure that alpha threshold is set a little bit on the higher side. And all this, I might have it draw the back faces in case maybe they're not casting a shadow. And I'll say OK. And you can see that the null is controlling this little shape. 
and it's a card with Sophia on it, but the whole card is casting a shadow, not just the section with her, which is counterintuitive to what I thought would happen. So it turns out this is not the way I'm going to go, but the way I am going to go is pretty nifty. So I'll go to this pre-comp where I had the roto of Sophia, and I'm going to take this layer and auto trace it. I'm going to say for the whole work area, apply it to a new layer, and I'm going to keep these default settings. I think they're the default, and say OK. It'll think about this for a moment. Excellent. So what I get is this mask that has a bunch of keyframes in it. it looks like two of them. Uh, this teeny one is probably just for a hole or a little bit that appears at one point. I don't need it. I'm going to get rid of it. But now I have a mask that is animated that is basically in the shape of Sophia. Now, if I had played with those settings, I could get this really tight to her, but I don't actually need it that defined. If I copy this auto trace layer into my original comp, I'm going to paste it here. Great. I'm going to turn it off. I don't need to see it. But I can go to Element 3D and say under Custom Text and Masks to source that auto traced Sophia. So nothing visibly happens right now, but watch this. I'm going to go into my scene setup, and this whole plane thing just wasn't working out, so I'm going to delete it. But I am going to add an extrude object in group 2. When I click extrude, look at this. It automatically extruded custom path number 1. Uh, that's just basically... It could be any of these paths, but it defaults to that first one, which is great. And this shape is actually that rotoed shape of Sophia, and it's going to change frame by frame through this animation. I'm going to change the bevel scale so she's a little bit thicker. Not overly thick, but just enough that I can work with this model. Great. Now I'm going to say OK. And now it's a little bit big. But you'll see that this null right here controls this shape. And the best part about this shape is that it is exactly the outline of Sophia from the footage, and it casts a shadow, a nice shadow. So as I place this around, I can place it in my scene to be basically aligned with Sophie. And if I find the right spot for it, it'll look like her feet or her body have interactive ambient occlusion and shadow settings coming from where she is in the scene. Now, because this is a 3D object just following, mimicking that vector outline, I do need to set some keyframes for it as well. But, let's see, we'll set some there. Go backwards a little bit. Just move this little 3D object around. And right now you can see the 3D object and the shadow that it's casting. I'm going to bring it up here a little bit. So it's kind of where her hands are, where her face is. Scale it down. And look at this, it gets a nice shadow of her right into the scene. There's two keyframes out of the way. Uh, I'll set another one for her moving back and past here. Just gonna scale that down as a cheat. Could probably be moving it in space also. I put this thing right here next to her, go to the very beginning, and move this all the way out here. What I should now kind of have is a shadow based on this vector punch out that is kind of following along with Sophia. 
Now, if I go back into Element and turn off one of the properties of that texture, which is this extrusion model has this texture here called Bevel 1. If I go to that and tell it in the very bottom to not be visible to camera, great. I'll say OK. The object will become invisible, but the shadows it was casting remain. So now I have this shadow that looks a lot like a cast shadow. It matches perfectly with the cast shadows from the real 3D elements in the scene. And it'll be changing every single frame along with her shape. So it gets all the detail of her little arms and the little bobbly thing on her hat. And now when I play through, even with just those few keyframes for its position, I get this awesome thing where it really looks like her cast shadow is going right onto that dresser. Comes down into the snow where she's contacting it. Looks like I'll have to extend her shadow or maybe stretch out the layer a little bit so the shadow's coming all the way down in this area. But not a big deal, that'll be easy enough to do. Look at this, and now her shadow will marry right with a shadow of the igloo as she crawls into it, just as it would if this were really shot. I can even probably do some masking cheats on her to make it look like she's becoming shadowed at the point that she enters here. But look at this, there, there's ambient occlusion coming off of that invisible object, which is kind of cool. So it's causing little shadows right here as this Sophie crawls into the igloo. I'll preview that now. And not perfect yet, but pretty amazing. It's a real cast shadow. It really follows her. And with a few tweaks, I think I can make this look really convincing. The trouble with doing this manually, or, you know, adding a duplicate of her layer that tints the background or something, is that trying to get one shadow to blend into another shadow is one of the most difficult compositing things ever. You can try some techniques like using the darken um, blending mode, and sometimes that helps if you've sampled the correct color to blend shadows together, but I always hate doing it. You end up trying to like mask out the other shadow, move the shadow in, and do all this other stuff. And in the end, it's not as great as all the CG elements using a real cast shadow from the world. So I love the way this looks. I can play with the diffusion settings on it a little bit more. I probably will by the end when this video comes out. Uh, again, this is a really crappy stage of this. It's kind of bad roto and not my final CG look. But uh, it was a really great solution that I was proud to come up with while trying to solve this, so I wanted to share it with you guys. Have a great day.